right, everybody. Here is the next paint job. It's a 2000 model, 46 foot Alden. It's 46 foot at the water line. It's just over 50 in length though. She has been clear coated and the clear coat is failing. See if you can see it. The entire boat is like this. So I have to remove all of that before I can proceed with the paint job. This is a monster boat. It is in pretty rough shape. There's all kinds of cracks and stuff that have to be ground out and glassed. I know it's hard to see, but it is what it is. I have just under three weeks to complete this job, stripes and all, and it's gonna be tough, nearly impossible, but I have faith in myself. It's gonna be a lot of hours. Anyhow, the first step that I always take before doing any prep on a boat is I degrease and I de-wax. And to do that, I simply use Comet and a coarse scotch brake. I've already done this side, but I figured I'd take a quick vid so y'all can see what I'm working with before I finish the cleaning and start hardware removal and sanding. So it is what it is. I'm gonna try and document every step I do for this, but with the short time period I have to complete this job, I'm not sure if I'll catch every step on video or not, but I will try. I mean, it is a mess. But nothing I can't handle. So anyhow, here's the first vid, and I'll be back with y'all soon. Okay, just to show y'all real quick what I'm talking about, with the de-waxing and degreasing, just so you kind of understand. I'm sure many of you already know this, but for those that don't. Okay, I'm trying to see. Water's all beaded up, and that's where I've already cleaned. That is de-waxed, and I'm happy with it, so it's ready to start sanding, obviously all here into the back of the boat i still have to scrub but i just wanted to show y'all what you were looking for no yes okay okay everybody now my pre-scrub is done and i wanted to note that when scrubbing with comet one don't let the comet dry on the surface so maybe only do like six foot sections at a time and two, spend just as much time rinsing the Comet residue off the boat as you did scrubbing it. You wanna make sure all the residue is gone. If not, it could potentially create problems further along down the road. So anyhow, my pre-scrub is finished and it's time to move on with hardware removal and then I can start busting open cracks. Okay, right. everyone, I've started the sanding process. It's going fairly smoothly. Um, I started out with 80 grit, figured that'd probably be my quickest, easiest way to remove the clear coat. And I just wanna show you. So here we have clear coat, here is sanded clear coat, and here it's removed. This is what we want, that's what we need. And you know, just figured I'd show you this. Some of you are probably like, why do you need to remove the clear coat? Well. It's already started failing. And if we sand it like this, prime it again and paint it, it will be sandwiched between two blue coats. And with the sun hitting it, it's gonna get really hot. And this is liable to just start releasing even more. And then your fresh paint job will start flaking and, and just going all to crap. So why even attempt it when you're, you're going for a big job like this? So. That's why we're removing all the clear coat, and I just wanted to show you all that real quick. All right, till the next time. Okay, everybody, so here I am steadily removing clear coat, and I was using this little six inch sander, and it was working, but it's not going fast enough for my liking, so I've done pulled out the big guy. This thing will work you out. Um, if you're not familiar with the eight inch grinder setups, they are dangerous and you have to be very careful because 
they will create so much damage on a boat that you just, it's unbelievable. So if you're not familiar with using an eight inch setup, I would not use one. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep on plucking along, removing the clear coat and I just got a tripod set up for my phone. So about lunchtime, I'm gonna get it all set up so y'all can kind of watch how I'm doing things and do a little time lapsing in with the video, kind of make it a little more interesting. But anyhow, this is a workout and uh, I'm getting big. So I'll be back soon and y'all can see the progress and happening. All right, later. All right, so y'all get the drift. That's what I gotta do to the whole boat. So I'm not gonna record this whole process, but you see how it's going, how I start, and I'll show y'all how I finish. See you soon. All right, fellas. So I'm sitting here minding my business, grinding away. And as I get to the home stretch, the front quarter of the boat, I run into this. We got blue paint, clear coat, blue paint, clear coat. You know, I could do it that way and just prime and paint over top of all of this, but I'm just not gonna do that. So regardless, this just opened up a little bit more work for me. Uh, you gotta love it. You just never know what you're gonna uncover when you start sanding. There's always hidden factors that add more time to a job and well, anyhow, I don't know. I just thought that I'd show you all that. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna get back to it and finish grinding. You gotta love it. Okay, everyone. I've gotten the bulk of the clear coat off with the eight inch. And that's as far as I'm gonna go with that big guy. So I'm breaking the six inch back out to remove all the, the coarser sanded marks because that's a bit too aggressive for the primer. And I'm also going to hit the boot stripe and just up along the edge of the rail. So the next step is six inch sanding and here we go. I have effectively and satisfyingly removed all the deeper scratches. So that's what we're looking for. And now I'm gonna proceed with the hand sanding and you know getting the boot stripe caught up to speed. I've already done the entire boat with the six inch after using the eight inch. This was just the last section and I figured I'd show y'all that extra step. So once I get all the hand sanding done, I'll clean the boat and I'll start doing some filling and glazing. So stay tuned, I'll be back soon. All right, fellas, so I just previously ate my words about being done with the eight inch grinder. I wasn't thinking about the stern. So before doing that, I have to remove the name and hail port, which I'm gonna do now. We'll see if this chisel works better. I got this big guy. All right, fellas. 
I got that off. Now, if you're not having your boat painted, or if you're not the one doing the work, do not remove your name in Halenport like I just did. That's not the way to do it. But with the amount of work that's being done to me, that was the quickest way to do it. And because I'm the one painting it, well, I can do it that way. But if you're just replacing your name or something along those lines, do not remove it like I just did. All right, just thought I'd note that. See you soon. All right, fellas. Now I have the name and hail and port removed. And the next step is to remove all this adhesive. It's a bit time consuming and it's a pain, but it's gotta be done. I'm using the 3M adhesive remover. Stuff works great sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But this is how I'm gonna do it. That seems like it's doing the trick. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. So, enjoy the show. All right, y'all get the drift. I just have to remove the Halen port adhesive and I can start grinding. So stay tuned, I'll be back soon. All right, down to the end of the sanding. I'm on the hand sanding now and this is the part that I dislike most about prepping for paint work. So I've just never been a fan of hand sanding, but it's needed, so. I'm knocking out the cove straight, figured I'd just catch a little bit of this on film so y'all can see the hand sanding as well. And so yeah, here it is Memorial Day weekend, a Saturday, and, and I'm here at work just plucking along and we'll continue to do so until this job is done. So here we go. All right, just real quick, I wanted to show you, I'm not sure if you can see this, but this hasn't been sanded and when you're sanding you want to make sure that the entire sanding profile is even so you know i know a lot of you know this but don't sand like that and think that you're done uh you really need to make sure you hit everything and get a nice even profile and you'll be good to go the primer is going to stick the paint's gonna stick, nothing's gonna peel or flake in the future. And uh, generally after I do this step as a final prep before priming, rather than blow wiping all the dust off, I do another wash with just the scotch brake, no comment needed. And the scotch brake helps reassure you that you get some type of sand and mark in an area that you may have missed with the sandpaper it's just an extra step that i prefer to do it it's how i've been doing it forever now and i've never had a problem so i just wanted to show you all that nice even sand and marks i can see a little bit there still so blam she's ready for primer just wanted to show you all that See okay soon. all the sanding is done for the most part except for i got a little bit of hand sanding still to do on the rub rail but i'm not doing that today so anyhow i just wanted to show y'all there's the sandpaper that i've used and uh i got 32 sheets of 8 inch 80 grit hook it and 82 sheets of 6 inch 100 grit hook it that is what it's taken me to do what I've done so far as far as removing the clear coat and then removing the coarser sand and marks done with the eight inch prepping for the, the primer. So, figured it was a good time to shoot a vid, let y'all see how much sandpaper it took to do this process. And well, yeah, uh, I'm moving right along and I guess uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. And so, yeah. Back at you soon.